Aloha, welcome to Condo Insider. You know, I was thinking that day we've probably done about 175 shows on association living, primarily condos. And uh, it's a great educational tool and we've been trying different formats. And I think I mentioned to you the last couple of times that I've been host that we're looking at um, kind of an educational format once a month where we don't have a guest, but I talk about a topic and we have some slides and you know, we talk about some issues. And I thought today we might do a little bit of a review of where we stand with the legislature and all the condo bills that were uh, proffered to the legislature uh, back in January of 2020 and kind of where things stand. And also talk about a seminar I recently attended on federal legislation. Uh, we don't talk about federal legislation a lot, but you know there's a, quite a few bills that uh, have an impact on condominiums throughout the United States that I'd like to just take a few minutes to review, and uh, and uh, I think that's what we're going to do today. In fact, that, I know that's what we're going to do today. Uh, the first thing I just want to tell you is kind of review kind of the industry. Um, with our state legislature, we've had as many as 150 bills introduced in a given year, meaning there's a proposed 150 changes to the current law. This year, 2020, we only had about 29, if I remember correctly, but uh, I introduced and uh, we kind of say that's because it's an election year and, and because of all the problems the state has, they don't want anything controversial in a, an election year. So it was kind of a lighter load than normal. And so, we had about 29 bills introduced, and before the COVID-19 crisis hit us, only eight remained in the sense the normal political process had uh, wiped out 21 of them and they either had hearings or didn't have hearings or didn't get hearings, and, uh, and so they died a natural death, leaving only eight when the COVID-19 crisis hit. And so the legislature took an adjournment and only announced recently that it's coming back to handle state business on June 22nd. That being said, in a way, because they have to, they're starting where they stopped, but they've pretty much made it clear that they have a lot of priorities to deal with the budget and the COVID issues that uh, they're not going to really uh, hear all the bills that were still active, that the uh, the pipeline I have tells me that uh, the various key leaders have told that uh, they can uh, provide two bills each uh, to be a part of the agenda, that uh, they're going to want to push as much as they can back to next year and only deal with those bills that uh, are critical. I thought it'd be also good to mention to you uh, that, you know, this is, a, this is a big issue, having bills, what the laws are and obligations and bills and fees and things along that line. Who represents you, the board and or the owner before uh, the legislature? And there's two organizations primarily. One is Community Association Institute, which we call CAI. And the other is the Hawaii Council of Community Associations, HCCA. Uh, believe it or not, HCCA was the oldest lobbying and education group in Hawaii, founded by Aaron Cheney many years ago, and currently head by a, a great industry advocate and great lawyer, Jane Sugimura. Uh, CAI is interesting because it's a Virginia-based industry organization, but they have the right to appoint for every chapter, where Hawaii is a chapter, the delegates for the Legislative Action Committee. And they usually get recommendations from the local chapter board on who to appoint. What's interesting about CAI is that the membership of the committee, the LAC committee, by their rules, has to be an equal number of lawyers, management company, owners, vendors type of people. So no one person or one group dominates the decisions being made. It's a, it's a very wide group. Um, the uh, delegates or the Legislative Action Committee representatives of CAI are appointed for two years. Uh, that ends uh, this year in a sense, there'll have to be re reappointments at the end of this year. Uh, you can't serve more than 10 years on the LAC. 
And uh, as you may or may not know, I'm the co-chair along with Phil Nerney of the CAI LAC, and, and I have eight years in, so I guess I, I, can, I can go for two more years. The Hawaii Council of Community Associations really is dominated by owners and not by industry management company and or vendors or lawyers. We certainly have those on the board, but if I looked at it, they don't have a specific rule with regard to uh, how many people uh, can be from each group, but it's dominated by homeowners and the two organizations, and I'm on the board of directors of that organization, work very closely together because it makes more sense than if we speak with one voice to the legislature. Although if we uh, don't agree, we all speak with our own voice. So it's, uh, it's not a slam dunk. Uh, uh, I would tell all of you out there listening that you should thank the volunteers who do that because they put tons of hours in every year, reading the bills, writing written testimony, going down the legislature and testifying. So anyway, that's kind of who represents you. And, uh, and you should be happy that someone does represent you because I can go back two or three years ago where um, they were trying to fool with uh, maintenance fees, right? And mandate certain levels. And, and then they had all sorts of other programs over the past years that had overwhelmingly negative testimony, but um, uh, people seem to put in bills and don't really ask the industry too much about it until they've already put it in. So let's kind of recap the state, where we stand with the state legislature. It comes back June 22nd. As I said, there are eight bills that are remaining and still alive technically, although we expect the legislature to um, only hear maybe a couple of them. Now this is critical for us in a way because there were two bills, Senate Bill 2421, and Senate Bill 2425, that basically took away the sunset date for the original act, which was Act 195 and 196. And what do we mean by that? As sometimes when the legislature is not sure it's a good idea, they will pass a bill, it say it sunsets on June 3rd, 2020. Meaning give it a trial run, see if there's any hidden conditions and unknown circumstances. And Senate Bill 24, uh, 21 and 25 had sunset dates on it. And Senate Bill 2421 was the one where they corrected the priority of payment issue, where you no longer could foreclose on a unit for unpaid fines and legal fees and things along that line, which you could do before that bill was enacted. And so if that bill were to sunset, and even if they want to deal with it in the future year, you end up with this kind of void of what were the rules from June or July 1, 2020 until the new bill got passed, whenever it got passed, maybe next year. So it leaves a void with uh, what was going on. And, and then you get the arguments in court. Well, I filed under the old law and the law sunsetted and what goes on. So it's kind of important that Senate Bill 2421 gets passed out and sign so that those hard work of those provisions for priority of payment, which protects the homeowners, becomes permanent law. Senate Bill 2425 was Act 196. And what that did was expand the mediation and arbitration opportunities for homeowners with disputes by their boards. Essentially it expanded it that not only could it be an owner versus board or vice versa, it could be a board member versus a board member, or board member versus a management company. And by voluntary agreement, they could make it binding arbitration versus mediation. And this is paid for by the Real Estate Commission Recovery Fund, which all associations pay into every year. So I can tell you, because I've analyzed the reports of uh, the results of these mediation, it's been very, very successful. Not all of them have been uh, resolved, and the ones that don't resolve Frankly, never end up in litigation. Everybody just says you're wrong and the other guy's wrong, and but nothing happens. It kind of goes away. But the reality of it is we don't want to lose this opportunity to try to settle disputes without uh, spending a lot of money of the owners who have to, you know, the boards have the association funds, which is everybody's funds. But we, we want to try to settle disputes among ourselves and, 
and the Senate Bill 2425 Act 196 expanded the rights to mediation, who could participate in mediation, and uh, allowed for binding arbitration if both sides agree so they can put behind it once and done and for all. So we're hopeful, uh, and we've sent the message to the legislator and the powers to be, to please make sure, because up until the COVID-19, there was zero testimony against these two bills. They were moving through quite nicely, all positive testimony, no negative testimony. And so uh, we're hopeful that they, if they pick ones from our industry, they're gonna move out, uh, that they would choose those two. A couple of the other incidental bills, just for your information, one um, uh, basically, uh, you collect these uh, fees from a condo associations every year. I want to say that fund has just under $2 million in it. And so why collect the fees if we're not using it? Its purpose is education and mediation. And so the, that particular bill allowed the real estate commission to suspend these payments by condominium association if they deemed that the recovery fund had sufficient money in it. And so it's a good thing. We'd like to see that happen, but, uh, um, it's not as critical as the first two I mentioned. The controversial bill that's kind of still there that had no affirmative or positive testimony for it, except from a 10th grade environmental class in some high school. And basically what they said is that they wanted every high rise condominium, I think a high rise was defined as 10 floors or more, to be required to put waste oil cans in some storage room downstairs. So people who cook in their apartment could come, I guess, take the oil from their frying pan, put it in a container, go down the elevator and put it into another container. And uh, they would pick it up because they use it for re recycling for, uh, uh, for energy. Uh, the problem with the bill and the negative testimony was is that it wasn't thought through to the extent that not every facility has a room to put these drums. And there is currently zero waste haulers who are willing to pick up the oil. So what do you do with it? So even though it's a conceptually a nice idea, um, the bill itself wasn't carefully thought through and it's still alive and all the testimony by the industry is against it. Uh, the 10th grade class has every one of their students right in, they're in favor of it. Um, and we're gonna to have to address that because it's not practically feasible. Although the idea is certainly, I, I give the class credit, they have a, they have a very interesting idea on, on, on what to do with respect to the bills. So anyway, that sums up the state legislature coming back June 22nd, very modified schedule, primarily gonna deal with the budget. We don't wanna see our two bills sunset. We'll see what happens with the other six bills and we're gonna take a short break and come back and talk about the federal side. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guests and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Welcome back to the Condo Insider. We had that nice little short break and I too would uh, thank all the sponsors of Think Tech. It's a wonderful community forum. And uh, I know in our industry, uh, the legislators want us to do as much as we can to educate volunteer board members, as well as owners on the rights and obligations of living in a condo because it's based on the principle of self-governance and, and hopefully the board are doing a good job and owners have tons of rights under our statute. 
On the federal side, I mentioned to you that um, there's a lot going on. The federal can be divided into two categories. The first being COVID initiatives. With the COVID and virus issue, we've seen the typical moratorium on debt collection. We see a housing initiative relief fund where they're trying to provide funds available so people don't lose their home or, or lose their apartment through eviction. We see a uh, what we call limited liability legislation, where if a condo opens their pool and someone gets COVID-19, they can't make an argument and sue the association and blame their disease on the association. So there's a limited liability version. And then there's uh, allowing condominiums to have access to some of these programs, the SBA programs for funding if they have issues they need to address because of COVID-19. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. The other legislation not related to COVID, which is, has been going on for several years, but I do want to briefly mention them, would be, uh, first of all, is going to be the um, amateur radio provision. This is really more homeowner associations where uh, the law basically said you can't prevent as an association an owner from putting up radio towers. So these shortwave radio homeowners we want to put up radio towers as part of our, our safety and security and ways to communicate if other things are down, uh, a nice backup system in event of a real emergency. Um, they want to be able to do that without any rules or restrictions. So in theory, in a homeowner association, I could put up a 100-foot um, radio tower in my front yard. And this legislation is designed to enhance and allow uh, antennas, but put some restrictions on location and height and, and other aspects that might uh, take away from the beauty of the community. The second one, which is really a, a critical, is what I'm going to call disaster relief. We all, we've all heard of um, you know, the uh, disaster relief we do in the time of a hurricane. You know, and you may not know it, but because these are private roads and and private property for a homeowner association and condominium, you're not eligible for any FEMA relief. They can't spend any money helping you clear your roads or clear the debris in your condo, or whatever it may be, as a result of a disaster like a hurricane and because it's private property. So this particular bill, which has got traction and moving well through the federal law, allows um, FEMA to provide assistance and support for homeowner and condo associations in the event of a natural disaster. And so that's a good thing because uh, particularly for homeowner associations who have miles of roads at times, but if it's a private road, currently FEMA doesn't have the ability to help. And we don't think that's fair and reasonable because we're all taxpayers. And, and so CAI is working very hard and has good traction with regard to that. And the third is to do with, you know, a simple topic. Some people like me want to work in this industry. And because there's all sorts of credentialing, certifying that I have the skills and ability and education and classes, that I might want to take courses. And all these education initiatives that are in currently law allow universities and and schools to provide uh, programs and teaching with government assistance, but don't allow industry organizations like CAI or others related to other industries to provide credentialing where that person who wants to get in that business can get some financial relief from the federal government with regard to uh, um, you know, the uh, education side of, of this. So those are active initiatives of the federal government uh, CAI uh, supports them. Our local uh, Hawaii industry supports them. And uh, but I would tell you from my experience, it takes years uh, for this stuff to happen. Uh, most likely one to happen in the next year or two is probably the radio, uh, ham radio and the, uh, and the one with regard to the FEMA. They seem to be supported by uh, lots of members of, of both houses. But CAI also makes national policy, which it distributes. And they're kind of initiatives, policy initiatives. They're always kind of generalized in a general way because every state has its own laws. 
And the top priorities we have today are number one, assistance to animals. We all know the problem with assistance to animals. And, and uh, you know, I'm getting on my phone every week from some organization called Therapy Animals, where fill out this form and get a certificate. You can take your therapy animal on the plane or, or the association has to let you keep it. And that policy initiative recognizes strongly the um, need of disabled people to have their, their assistance animals. But we think there ought to be some regulation where it's controlled so people can't take advantage of it. Because right now, uh, most organizations are saying, or most governments are saying, you can't ask any questions to make them prove that they have a legitimate need for an assistance animal. There's got to be some balance. The other policy formation they're going to have is relatively simple. A lot of associations have old governing documents. And believe it or not, they have restrictive covenants they're somewhat insensitive to racial issues or discrimination issues like the handicap. And so the federal proposed initiative is to allow easy ways for any association that has a discriminatory covenant to be able to delete it and change it without having to go through a whole lot of humbug with all the owners and get into that whole sensitivity issue. And it's designed to comply with the federal law and the intent and, and, the, and what I consider the goodness of America. We're all uh, residents here. We're all entitled to the rights under our constitution. The other policy initiatives that they have is gonna be on manager licensing. Well, managers, uh, frankly, are rarely licensed anywhere in the state. They're required to be registered. But it's gonna take the position that registration and education are important and licensing, not so much. And so that's their policy. I haven't seen it, I've seen drafts of it, but uh, that's one of the things they're working on right now is trying to set some, some guidelines so state legislatures and others can see a balanced approach to registering condos. You I mean, think about a condo in Hawaii, it does, they're not equal. You can have a two unit condo or a thousand unit condo or, or a condo where the management company only does the financial statements. One size doesn't fit all. So uh, legislatures have a tendency to look at one size fits all. And, and so the idea behind the, the policy initiative is to set some standards with regard to what we think is an industry is correct. And the final one I know a lot about, although I don't know what they're proposing, they just told me in this seminar, is changes to the reserve study. Well, reserve studies have been a really big issue with respect to condo associations and not so much homeowner associations in Hawaii, and it's a requirement of the statute, HRS 514B. But, you know, there's different types of reserve studies, like there's different types of accounting. So they want to set some standards of what prudent practices are for, for doing reserve studies. And it's probably a good thing, but I haven't seen the language yet because they're still holding group meetings to talk about the various issues with regard to reserve studies and, and, and that's kind of where that is going. So that's the policy initiatives. But I wanna to say to all of you out there that you know, all of you have resources available to you. The, one of, probably one of the best resources is the CAI, the CIOnline.org website. They have huge resources on a thousand topics and they even list what different states do. So if you're really troubled with an issue on house rules or, or delinquencies or collection, you have a simple choice of going to uh, ciaonline.org. And so the Real Estate Commission puts out bulletins and uh, CAI and HCCA do seminars, which are wonderful. And we have this show, Condo Insider, which is a, a really good effort. And we have really reasonably good uh, people watching it, remembering it's on YouTube, so you don't have to be here only a Thursday at three o'clock. You can get the information anytime you want. So, you know, that's a, those are those are really good resources with respect to how you can get information. Now, how do you get involved? Now, getting involved is really easy. And we say to all of you, if you're in, you want to get involved, you know, first of all, join HCCA or CAI and, and be on their member list, and you'll get emails. 
and you'll get notices and you'll saying this bill is up for adoption, send in testimony. And all you have to do is go to the legislative website, Hawaii legislature, register. Register requires you to do three things. One, pick a username. Two, pick a password. Three, give them your email. And then you're registered. And then you can go into the site and type in Senate Bill 2421. And when there is testimony being taken, you can fill a little form online and say oppose or against. You're going to attend the hearing or not attend the hearing. And you can, um, by the plug of a button, it'll go to all the people involved in that particular bill or that initiative. And we hope that more and more people will get involved because the legislature is greatly motivated by people's testimony. And even though the industry has two strong advocate groups who uh, work on this all the time, it helps us. We go out all the time and ask, please then send in testimony. Please send in testimony so they, don't, they see we're not alone in this initiative. But anyway, that's kind of a summary of today and what's going on with the state of Hawaii, what's going on on the federal side, what the policy and issues of CAI are. Hope we gave you some resources to uh, go look things up. You're always welcome to call into the show or send us an email for information. We do want to thank you for watching Condo Insider, and we will have another show next Thursday at three o'clock. Aloha. <laughs>